5.6 is all about confidence intervals. So the goal for this chapter is to use normal distribution to solve problems that involve confidence intervals. So there are three key terms we need to know. Margin of error is the possible difference between the estimate of the value you're trying to determine as determined from a random sample and the true value for the population. The margin of error is generally expressed as a plus or minus percent, such as, such as plus or minus 5% but not all the time. We'll look in a, at an example. Confidence interval is the interval in which the true value you're trying to determine is estimated to lie with a stated degree of probability. The confidence interval may be expressed using plus or minus notation, such as 54.0% plus or minus 3.5%, or ranging from 50.5% to 57.5%. So how we got this 50.5 is we took 54.0 and subtracted 3.5% from it. And how we got 57.5 is we took 54.0 and we added 3.5% to it. The confidence level is the likelihood that the result for the true population lies within the range of the confidence interval. So surveys and other studies usually use a confidence level of 95%, although 90% or 99% is also sometimes used. So let's look at the learn about the math. So a, tele a telephone survey of 600 randomly selected people was conducted in an urban area. The survey determined that 76% of people from 18 to 34 years of age have a social networking account. The results are accurate to within plus or minus 4% points, 19 times out of 20. So what we need to do is we need to find the margin of error, the confidence interval, and the confidence level for this problem. So the margin of error is usually a plus or minus percent. So in this case, our margin of error is plus or minus 4%. So the confidence interval then would be 76% of people have a social networking account plus or minus 4% of people. So we have 76% plus or minus 4%. But you can also express this as a range by taking 76% minus 4%, which is 72%. So this can be said it's 72% to 76% plus 4% to 80. So we can also say that this is from 72% to 80% of people have a social networking account. The confidence level is completely different from the confidence interval. Confidence level is the probability of the confidence level is the likelihood that re the result for the true population lies within the range of the confidence interval. So the confidence level, it says that these results are accurate 19 times out of 20. So our confidence level then is going to be 19 out of 20. So if we write that as a percent, we get 19 divided by 20 times 100 gives us 95%. So therefore, the probability for error is 5%. So it says that the results are accurate 19 times out of 20, which is 95% of the time. Good. So that is how you find the confidence level, the confidence interval, and the margin of error for a data set. Let's look at example two. So now we're going to look at the effect of sample size on the margin of error and confidence intervals. So it says, polling organizations in Canada frequently survey samples of the population to gauge voter preference prior to elections. People are asked, one, if an election were held today, which party would you vote for? If they say they don't know, then they're asked, two, which party are you leaning towards voting for? The results of, the, of three different polls taken during the first week of November 2010 are shown here. The results of each po poll are considered accurate 19 times out of 20. So how does the sample size in a poll affect the margin of error and the confidence interval? Let's look at what Martin did. So first, Martin figured out our confidence level. So it says that the results of each poll are considered accurate 19 times out of 20. So then if they're accurate 19 times out of 20, we write 19 out of 20 as a percent, which in this case is also 95%. So the confidence level for each poll is 95%. So, then he organized, he made himself a nice chart to organize, oh, margin of error to sample size. So if we look at this chart, we see that as our sample size increases, our margin of error decreases. So it says if the polls are assessed using the same confidence level, when the sample size increases, the margin of error decreases. 
so a larger sample size results in the possibility of a poll that more accurately represents the population. So let's think about this. If we were to survey the entire population except for one person, the, the accuracy of that poll would be very, very high because we only haven't counted one person. But if we were to take only half of the population and survey them, then our results are going to be less accurate. Good. So for B, it says the confidence interval in the reported results. So how does the sample size affect the confidence interval in the reported results? So we discovered that the greater our sample size, the less our margin of error is. So if you remember, to find the confidence interval, we take the results we got and we go plus or minus our margin of error. So here we have a range or a confidence interval of 33.6% to 40.4%. If we look at Ipsos, we have a range of 31.9% to 38.1%, which is less than the nanos. If we look at the echoes, which was the greatest sample size up here, so we have 26.7% to 31.3%, which is even less. So the Nanos poll predicts that 33.6% to 40% of the population will vote for a conservative. That's a range of 6.8%. The Ipsos poll predicts that 31.9% to 38.1% of the population will vote for a conservative. That's a range of 6.2%. How do we find a range again? Oh yeah, we take the big number and we subtract the lesser number from it. The ECHOES poll predicts that 26.7% to 31.3% of the population will vote conservative. So that's a range of only 4.6%. So then if polls are conducted using the same confidence level, when the sample size increases, the range in the confidence interval decreases. Look at example three. To meet regulation standards, baseballs must have a mass from 142.0 grams to 149.0 grams. A manufacturing company has set its production equipment to create baseballs that have a mean mass of 145.0 grams. So, to ensure that the production equipment continues to operate as expected, the quality control engineer takes a random sample of baseballs each day and measures their mass to determine the mean mass. So, if the mean mass of the random sample is 144.7 grams to 145.3 grams, then the production equipment is running correctly. If the mean mass of the sample is outside the acceptable level, the production equipment is shut down and adjusted. The quality control engineer ref refers to the chart shown here when conducting random sampling. So, what is the confidence interval and the margin of error the, the engineer is using for quality control tests? So our confidence interval is the range that the mean mass of the random sample can fall in and still be acceptable. So it says that if the mean mass of the random sample is 144.7 grams to 144.3 grams, then it's acceptable. The equipment is running correctly. So that is our confidence interval. The margin of error can be found by subtracting the mean from the upper and lower limits of the confidence interval. So here we have our upper limit was 145.3 grams minus our mean of 145 works out to 0 0.03. But if we take our lower limit, 144.7 minus 145.0 grams, our mean works out to negative 0.3. So therefore, our margin of error is plus or minus 0.3 grams. B says we need to interpret this table. So this says that in order to be confident that 99 out of 100 times the mean mass of the sample is within our confidence interval, the engineer needs to take a random sample of 110 baseballs from the production line. So in order to be confident that 95 out of 100 times the mean mass sits in our confidence interval, the engineer needs to take 65 baseballs. In order to be confident that 90 times out of 100 times the mean mass of the sample is in the confidence interval, the engineer needs to take 45 baseballs. So C says, what is the relationship between confidence level and sample size? Well, let's look here. As the confidence level gets higher, we need to take more baseballs. 
So for a constant margin of error, as the confidence level increases, the size of the sample needed to attain that confidence level also increases. To have greater confidence that the baseballs meet quality standards, the engineer must use a larger sample. So in summary, it's often impractical, if not impossible, to obtain data for a complete population. In one case in Canada, we do have the census, which does obtain data for the whole population. But instead of doing this, random samples of the population can be taken, and the mean and standard deviation of the data are determined. This information is then used to make predictions about the population. So when a data approximates a normal distribution, the confidence interval indicates the range in which the mean of any sample of data of a given size would be expected to lie, with a stated level of confidence. This confidence interval can then be used to estimate the range of the mean for the population. So then sample size, confidence level, and the population size determine the size of the confidence interval for a given confidence level. What do we need to know? We need to know how to find a confidence interval, how to find our margin of error, and how to find the confidence level. So, for example, a sample of 1,000 is considered to be accurate to within plus or minus 3.1 percent 19 times out of 20. But the bigger our sample size gets, the less our margin of error is. So a sample of 2,000 is considered to be accurate to within 2.2 percent 19 times out of 20. Notice how our confidence levels are staying the same. They're always 19 times out of 20. So as our sample size gets bigger for the same level of confidence, our margin of error gets smaller.